Welcome to Daron Yoga. When I ask my students what they want to focus on, the answer is almost always hips. So today we'll work on a 20 minute hip dedicated sequence that is really efficient and will create change fast, especially if you do this three, four times a week. It's only 20 minutes, so breathe through it, do an extra warm up if you need to, and uh, try to enjoy it, really. Here we go. Let's come to the hands and knees to all fours. We'll start with delicious pose. So really moving the hips in circles up, down, maybe even shoulders, elbows. It's a belly dancer deluxe, right? And then go ahead and switch directions. Make it really, really fluid. Let all your lower back and hips get lots of love. And then come to neutral, walk the hands forward for downward puppy. Just really surrender the head down, chin down, chest maybe even down. And walk the hands back. Coming again to the hands and knees, right leg up, and just bring the knee to the nose. We'll do this a few times, warming up the core and the hips. So just um, do that a few times and then straighten the right leg again. Left, le left arm reaches forward, both of them powerful, reaching for forward and back. And then every time you exhale, bring the knee to the nose, the elbow in. So exhale, inhale, extend, and then stay for another moment or two. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Yippee! Left leg up, and then again, just a few times, knee to the nose. Exhale every time you bring the knee forward. Inhale to extend, warming up the core, and that's it. Stay with the left leg straight, right arm up in the air, if possible. Of course, if not, keep the right arm down. Breathe, and then a few times, tuck everything in. So tuck, exhale, inhale, extend. Tuck, inhale, extend. And then hold for a couple more breaths and release. Beautiful. We're going to come into Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. If you want, bend the knees deeply to really get into the shoulders and upper body for a moment. And then go ahead and bend one knee at a time, letting the legs wake up. And reach the right leg up to the sky. Bend the right knee, opening up the hips. Woohoo, here we go more hips straightening the leg behind you exhale bring the right foot between the hands left knee lowers down runners lunge and then we'll go and take low lunge bring the hands to the hips and really make sure you're sinking heavy down into the hips right you can see here i'm lifting in the chest so i'm not collapsing into the lower back but i am reaching back so i can have as much weight as possible as i let the hips be heavy and the chest lifting up hands back to the ground tuck the back toe take a moment here lifting the back knee again runner's lunge just feeling those hips heavy gravity is on your side helping you so warming it all up and then we'll add a little twist right arm up to the sky taking the right hand up to the sky looking up if possible the hips are still low back leg strong and right leg down to the ground step it back we'll take our vinyasa you can use the knees if you need to inhale opening up baby cobra and exhale into the downward facing dog here we go second side left leg reaches up bend the knee open up the hips stay a few breaths and breathe pressing the right heel to the ground and then straightening the left leg exhale and bring the foot between the hands right knee lowers down taking low lunge so really again sinking the hips allowing gravity to do the work for you just find a little bit of extension in the spine breathe keep your mind steady and I find that when I'm doing these deep stretches, I just go and deepen my exhales a bit to find even more softness and release. Good. Lifting to the hands down to the ground and lifting up to the runner's lunge for a few breaths. Back leg is active. And then we'll take the twist. So keeping the hips low, you can see it's one straight line, back leg, front knee. And then opening up, if possible, looking up to the left hand, breathing. Good. 
hands down to the ground step it back here we go chaturanga inhale urdhva mukha upward facing dog exhale adho mukha downward facing dog anytime you need to take a child's pose take a child's pose if you're feeling okay come on and join us we're going for another low lunge so these low lunges really help with the psoas opening in this case what i did is i moved my right foot forward a little further forward and to the right then i opened up to the edge of the right foot meaning my right knee moved to the side and i lowered my forearms to the ground this really gets nice and deep and juicy into the hips you could see i even slid my back foot further back because i wanted more intensity for those that need less intensity stay up maybe put your forearms on the block maybe keep the hands on the ground right so each one of us will have to always modify according to our needs but no matter what you can do this pose from very beginner to super advanced and enjoy it okay here we go lifting back up i'm bringing my knee forward a bit to release stepping it back taking your vinyasa chaturanga with or without knees up dog and downward dog and then we'll bring the left foot forward right knee down you can see here a little clearer how i'm doing it opening the knee to the side right and again if i really want to make it um spicier i'll try to keep both hips parallel to the ground meaning instead of just kind of rolling onto the right hip i'll keep weight moving on to the left which will definitely make it more intense my gaze is at one point you can see the fingertips pretty relaxed if i need more intensity i walk the forearms forward or the back knee back my spine is somewhat long right i didn't collapse the head and chest keeping the gaze a little forward so try to do the same if you can and deepen the exhales to find more softness more release and when we're in these poses there's nothing to do just stay and breathe stay and breathe great here we go slowly walking the hands back maybe bring the back knee a little forward and then we're going to come to all fours again i'm doing knees chest chin you can do chaturanga here i go baby cobra downward dog your choice you can always do either cobra or upward facing dog right foot comes forward again left knee is to the ground we're going to intensify it a little bit and go a little more into the quads as well so um sink as much as you can into the hips like we did in the low lunge but then maybe um if you can reach with the right hand take hold of the left foot and bring it closer to your hips if that's easy enough lower it to your left forearm and really press it towards your hips and lengthen breathing again right here we go slowly slowly release the pose and you can redo the pose again or if you if it's available for you try to do the same thing this time without going down we're keeping the hips really low my right knee is more or less about the right ankle and i'm bringing the left foot as far forward as possible for those that know the bikasana it's kind of like that i'm going to take a little crazier variation most of us won't do it it's adding a little more back bending into it just because i love it so you can either hook the left elbow around the foot if available reach back with your right hand if available take a deeper back bend with the head back again this is just for fun i couldn't resist but you can totally stay in just stretching your psoas and quads because before good releasing again taking your vinyasa make sure you breathe through it it's our little bit of movement a little bit of warming up between sides to keep the body nice and fluid and supple so again starting with right hand down left hand reaches back for the right foot bring the right foot as close as possible to your hip breathing here make sure you're heavy with the hips and then releasing <coughs> and we'll take the second variation i forgot to show you here with the forearm down so you can do that for a few breaths and then going for the second variation with the um with the without lowering down so this time 
I'm either staying up with foot towards the hips or I am hooking the back arm to hold the leg as I take the left hand to the foot and opening up the spine, opening up the chest, a little deeper back bend. Um, I find that the hips really relate to the back and as we open the hips, it actually helps us be more open in our lower back. So that's why I add sometimes back bends to it. Release, take your vinyasa, meeting in downward dog. Take a breath or two there. Good. From here, we're simply moving to a straddle, right? Kind of like riding a horse. Some people like to call it goddess pose. My feet did turn slightly to the side. I'm keeping my hips as low as possible, you know, trying to go towards knee height. It may not happen today, but just going in that direction. Chest is lifting up as much as possible. And ooh, if you want to get more leg work, lift the heels off the ground so you get a little more intensity there. Right. And then lower the heels down, hands to the legs, to the thighs. And just taking a little twist here. And then to the other side, right? And again, just sinking the hips low so you're still getting the hips low as you're opening a little bit in the spine. Beautiful. There we go. Step it back, take a vinyasa. It doesn't matter really which side of the mat you're using. Most of us, the front and the back are equally gorgeous. Meeting in downward facing dog. Step or jump the feet forward and then we're gonna go ahead and spread the feet again this time a little narrower narrower um, for a slightly feet apart utkatasana so feet are hip width sinking the hips down chest up arms up the nice thing about these things is that they also strengthen not only stretch if you can lift the heels up you can see i've lifted the heels and i've lowered the hips to knee height chest up hands to the heart and slowly, slowly, slowly lower further, further, further until maybe, maybe your hips come all the way down if possible. Feet down, ankles down, heels down. If not, um, it's okay. Keep the heels up. Um, elbows to the inside of the thigh. Chest is up. Mind is steady. Gaze is steady. Stay calm. Variations. If you need more intensity, then go ahead and walk the arms forward stretch your chest forward let yourself really stretch all the way from the hips to the shoulders and then to the arms and fingertips okay. walk it back we're gonna go ahead and wrap the right arm around the right leg if you can take a bind open the chest look up hips are constantly low to the ground combining the hips with a bit of openness in the spine really healthy for the back great switching sides and then take there a few breaths and eventually lower to your seat great once you took your seat we'll take the feet together and open them as much as possible almost like you're going to read a book knees to the side preparing for baddha konasana bound angle pose when you're ready, start to lower down. Some of us will be sitting on a block here. If you're in a big slampasana in your spine, sit on a block so you can actually tilt your hips forward. If that's, um, if that's, if you don't have a block, you can do what I'm doing now. I'm just using my hands behind me to help tilt the hips forward and pushing the chest forward. And then just go down as far as you can go, right? The good news is if you keep practicing this, eventually you'll also be down to the ground. Just be patient, be patient. And hips are like our biggest challenge for patience for many of us. Coming up, taking the feet wide apart for Upavishta Konasana. I'm really working on tilting the hips forward again. You can use the hands behind you, you can sit on a block. If that's available, walk the hands forward. If that's available, lower to the forearms. And then eventually just stay and relax here. If you can, lower the head down to your hands. And just breathe. So we're not doing a ton of movement here. We're really trying to find almost like yin moments. 
poses moments of surrender. Inhale, coming up. Then we'll turn over to the right side. Really open the chest towards the sky. Reaching the right hand towards the foot. Left hand also towards the right foot. If not available, you can just keep it behind the head. That's fine. Or in the sky, like I'm showing here, the variations. Right, so I'm feeling it in the hips, in the leg, and I'm opening the chest. Inhale, coming up, and exhale, we'll switch sides. This time, left elbow down, right hand either behind the head or shoulder blade or reaches to the foot as well. Again, try to maintain breath, lower as much as you can, but while you're lowering down, try to keep length in the spine. Don't just collapse down. I'm using bandhas. Inhale, coming up. Gotta shake it away a little bit. Woohoo! Life's good. Shake everything. Shake your hand, mouth. And release. Whew. Especially if you find yourself getting a bit intense. It's always good to just shake it away. Speak a little gibberish. And then we'll take ankle to knee pose. So you can see my ankle was on the knee. My knee was up in the air. And for some of us, that's where you're going to be. Some of us will lower the ankle all the way to the foot. And that's fine. Some of us, none of that is available. And we'll have to do the variation I'm just showing right now. So again, finding whichever variation works for you. And then once you find it, lengthen the spine and surrender into the pose. Just stay and breathe. Especially if it's easy for you, be precise with the ankle to knee, otherwise you won't feel much of anything. Go ahead, switch sides. That means your ankle is right on the knee and the other ankle is right underneath the knee. The legs are um, parallel to each other, the shins are parallel to each other. That's why they call it actually fire log pose, Agnistambhasana, because you're really stacking your shins like they were fire log in a very nice and neat way. Inhale, slowly coming up, again, releasing, and then let's come into all fours and just move the legs and the hips to be able to release a little bit, shake it away, great, and then let's take big circles with the hips, so really use as much of range of motion as you can, I'm moving pretty fast here, you can go slower, go in both directions, I like to go a little fast to create a little muscle work here so that um, I'm balancing the hip stretching with hip strengthening. Switching legs, big circles. You may actually feel even your shoulders working here, and that's fine. Go ahead, switch directions. It, yes, this is also great um, glutes work. It'll make you help you get sexy buttocks. Nice. Oh, the lovely pigeon. Maybe this is the most well-known pose for hips. So if you keep the foot closer to your hips, it's a little more manageable for very open hips. Work on taking the foot forward. As you lower down, if you do lower down to your forearms, just again, try to lengthen the spine. Keep the gaze slightly forward. If you do collapse the head, that's fine. Just try not to go into too much thinking. Stay present with deep breathing and soft gaze or closed eyes. If all that's fine, you can see I lowered here the head all the way down, but I'm still maintaining as much as possible a long spine and even crawling the elbows forward to elongate further. Okay, so we'll stay here for a little bit. Make sure again you deepen the exhales and breathe. Slow, steady, smooth breaths. Ujjayi breath is very useful. Okay. Slowly start to come up, open the chest. And then again, just a few circles to either side, just to release the hips either direction on the same leg. Yeah. Let's meet in downward facing dog and bring the left foot forward. Again, you'll take the foot out as much as you need, but be honest with yourself. Some people just take the foot out feeling that they need more intensity, but then lose the squareness of the hips. And if you find yourself falling onto one side, in this case the left side, 
you may lose most of the work on the hips, so better to keep the foot closer but the hips square if you want it to be as efficient as possible. And then the more you can relax the mind, the more you can relax the whole body, right? Nothing is working. Gravity and your body weight are doing the work. The quicker it actually happens because there's no resistance. If you feel it intense, that's okay. Just try not to call it by bad names, right? Just let it be intense and you can stay with your breath. That way, again, the body will just find its way to surrender and open, especially since hip openers are very much related to emotional holdings. So the more free you are with your emotions, the quicker and easier it will be for the hips to open. Slowly coming up, again coming to all fours and taking a few circles to each direction on the left leg. And then when you're ready, either downward dog or if you want to take a vinyasa, go ahead and take a vinyasa. That's it folks. Come back, take a seat for a moment. I personally love to take a little seated meditation to feel the calmness and steadiness and the openness of the work we've done. Uh, but you can always just bring your hands to your heart for a moment and take a moment of gratitude like I am thanking you right now very much for your participation and work with me together here and uh, super grateful if you go ahead and uh, leave me a comment even if you loved it just tell me you tried it how do you feel how many times have you practiced this um, really share your experiences I'd love to feel like there's an audience and like I'm chatting with you guys. So um, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes or good practices like this. And uh, like the page. And if you like more, go even to Daron Yoga and subscribe to the newsletter. You'll get even further information about what I do and where I teach. So you can come down and practice with me in person. Thank you all so, so very much. Love you and see you soon. Namaste.